How's it going? We have met <gasps> in the past. We do a channel called Whoa. ASAP Science on YouTube. Your bow ties epic. Yeah. It's, it's is it? Real feathers, yeah. Is it actually? Oh, wow. It's amazing. Yeah, it's we have cool. a bit of a live stream going, but also Great. to this camera. Do you mind just for anyone who doesn't know? I think they all know who you are, but just tell them who you are. You want me to look at you or the camera? Uh, you, you can look at me. It's okay. Yeah. Ooh, you're good. Hi, my you're name. Good. My name's uh, Chris Hadfield. I'm uh, an astronaut. I've flown in space three times and done a couple of spacewalks and commanded the space station. Okay. And proudly Canadian. I'm a Canadian astronaut, that's yeah, right. Uh, was NASA's director in Russia and uh, done a bunch of different things. And currently I'm here in San Francisco as the chair of the board of the Open Lunar Foundation and uh, doing a lot of different things. Okay, that's fine. Have you been to the Breakthrough Prize before? I no, is there I've been working with Pete Warden and Yuri Milner a fair bit with the Open Lunar Foundation, but no, I haven't been to this. I'm looking forward to the night. So what do you think is so important about doing this, creating sort of like an Oscar type event for scientists? What do you think is an important part of that aspect? I think you guys probably know that I didn't just fly the spaceship, but I think it's really important to share the experience with people. Yeah. If you're just focusing purely on the science, then most people won't know what you're up to. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially if it's a public venture, people have to know what's happening so that they can understand it and maybe decide whether they want to support it or not. I spent a lot of my astronaut career sharing the experience with as many people as possible. And, and I think this as well, in the search for life beyond Earth, which any sort of logical analysis would indicate there probably is life some there, we should include as many people as possible. Don't just make it a group of people by a big radio telescope. Mm -hmm. Include everybody. And this is a nice way to include everyone. So our young audience, we've been asking a lot of scientists uh, this question, and it's about the climate crisis and climate change. And just I think what people want to know is just to hear from scientists how they speak about it, what their opinions are about what we can be doing at this time. Speaking to them, what is your opinion on what's going on? Uh, right now there are seven and a half approaching eight billion people on the earth. We all exhale, we all turn the lights on, we all flush the toilet, we all have the heat up in our house or the air conditioning in our house. That, that's not for free. Um, and right now we're doing it almost entirely based on fossil fuels, which has worked great for the last several hundred years million years if you include wood but um, but it won't work when you get to a certain scale of people. The atmosphere can't absorb that much pollution Ni neither can the oceans and so in order to continue to have a good quality of life for however many of this is going to be, maybe 10 billion, we have to change where the power comes from. We need alternate energy sources. We also need to find efficient ways to clean the extra carbon out of our atmosphere and it has to happen right away. Uh, we are polluting at a rate that uh, that our environment just can't support until parts of the world are going to become uninhabitable. So, so it's a serious problem. We've always had serious problems to face. <laughs> this is just the one that's facing us. So we need to take it seriously. Thank I, you so I have much. One last question, yeah. and it is: you have such a unique perspective on Earth from the outside of it. Not many people have that interesting look. One question that came up a lot for our audience was: given your work and what you do, how has that impacted your view on the meaning of life? Uh, it's a huge privilege to be able to go around the world thousands of times, to see the whole world as one place, to do a spacewalk holding onto the outside of a spaceship while, while going through the aurora. It gives you a very accurate perspective of the world. The world's not very big. The little bubble of air that we live in is not very thick. Yeah. And so I think the meaning of life is very personal, but everyone, in order to build that personal meaning, should really try and understand how precious and how rare uh, this little bubble is that we all live in and that we all share it. Um, and so I think the meaning of life is to truly come to terms with where you exist in the universe and how important it is to coexist with the people around you. It's my purpose. Thank you so much. That was much. an amazing answer. I love uh, One Strange Rock, that um, recent thing on Netflix. Yeah, you think so? I, I loved it. We've got a Generator in Toronto, the big science and art and uh, comedy and music show. That'll be coming at Roy Thompson Hall on uh, January 10th again this year. Oh my gosh, we're going to go with that. You got to go. got to go, guys. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. It's a pleasure Thank to see you again. Really Enjoy the event. show. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. See you soon. Bye, Thank Chris. You.